So when I went back to my body, I knew that it was going to get ugly. And when I came back into my body and then I was taken home, I was immediately, the, Jesus spoke to me about the person who was going to pick me up, but I didn't know that person was going to pick me up and take me home because I couldn't drive myself. That person, Jesus talked to me, said, you've got to talk to him. He's the first person I'm sending you back for. There were 12 people lined up, but he was the first. So he comes and gets me, wheels me in a wheelchair out to the car, puts me in the car. And I'm crying and, and pleading with him, you need to engage God. The Lord spent 10 minutes talking out of the 45, talking to, to me about you. He goes, what? I go, you have no idea what is written about you. He was a multimillionaire and he was 21 years old. And you know why I was his friend? Because when he would take me out to eat, I would pay for the meal, and he'd start crying. He says, no one does that. Everyone expects me to pay. I go, I'm your friend. I don't expect you to pay. He couldn't believe it. He says, no one ever buys my meal. And I told him, I said, the Lord Jesus showed me exactly what you're going to be worth when you die. And he said, if you tell Jason to pray in the Spirit, it will, allow, it will allow him to walk in truth to the point where the Satan will not be able to steal his well that's coming in. And it was four times, if he, the Lord said, if he listens to you, he showed me to the penny what he would make at the end of his life, it was four times what he was going to make if I didn't talk to him. This is the kind of thing that a lot of people don't know about what I saw. So I told him that, and he rejected it. I told him, I said, the Lord warned me that you're going to be in lawsuits. And that if you pray in the Spirit, you'll stay out of court. That was my exact words. So it was interesting just not that long ago, I was reading a book by a doctor. And the doctor in this book was talking about this guy that had plagiarized his property and, and he got sued. And I go, oh my God. Did you grasp what I just said? Okay, so God was trying to warn him. Okay, the number two person that I went to was in my church. I talked to him. And then the number three person was a girl. And I talked to her. She rejected what, what the Lord sent me back for. But the second guy took it, and now I've seen him on TV. He is very prosperous. He's a businessman. He, he prospered. But I want to tell you how hard it is to be sent back from the dead the first 12 people, I, I was sent to them. I told them. They all wept, but they didn't, re, they didn't accept it, some of them. You, you are so valuable that God would send somebody back from the dead to talk to you. But see, no one knows the value of that except me. You are trying to grasp it. Like, why is this guy here? Is this really the way it is? Well, yes. I didn't come back for myself. I don't need, I don't need this. You need this. I know this. I live this as part of me. You slice me up, you'll get a, you'll get a piece of Jesus with every slice. That's the, I, I'm completely taken over by him. But I'm very weak all the time because I have to stay on the crest of the wave of the Spirit. So I have to stay weak all the time, which means you can take advantage of me. I have to live in that sweet spot where because I'm weak, I become strong. It's constant. 
I know what it's like to be strong on my own. Now, in South Africa, I was preaching, and I was told what to preach. So I did it. But it wasn't what the Spirit wanted me to say. And um, because I was out of my element, and I just I, I submitted to the pastor, and I did it. But you know what it's like to have a message for a, a country and a people, and I'm not allowed to speak it. You have no idea what that's like. But I blessed them because I did talk about my heavenly experience. However, because I was out of my element, you know what I'm talking about. Because when you're not in your element, you start to misspeak. You start to act. You just feel weird. And it, it, you don't like it because this is not me. And, and Jesus would never want that. He wants you to be you. Well, what happened was I started to talk about myself, which is a big no-no with me anyway. When I said I the second time in a row, audibly, in front of all those thousands of people, audibly the Lord said to me, if you say I one more time, I'm going to go over there and I'm going to wait until you're done talking about yourself. This is my ministry. So if you notice, I get up here and just minister. I don't even talk about myself. I don't talk about my book table. Talk about anything except what Jesus is saying to you. The reason why is, is I get on that sweet spot. Like you need to find that sweet spot on the way. And you set your sights on where you're going. You don't look down. There's a spot in the spirit where you have to stay. If you want revelation, if you want visitation and habitation in that order, you have to find your sweet spot with the Holy Spirit. But it's not emotional. You can't do this life on your own. And all your friends would say it's pretty evident. Because they've seen what you do. When you are out of your element. And I remember when I was in flight training, I was trying so hard to be a good pilot. And the, and the, 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 cat, the captain for our airline, he was spoken to by the Lord to give me all my ratings for free. So $250,000 worth of training he gave to me. He said, I feel like I'm supposed to do this. And I'm thinking, that is God because I walked away from it. And he came to me and he said, I have to do this before I die. I made a deal that I would do this for someone else because someone did it for me. You're the man. So what I did was I, I submitted to him and we did the three-year program in nine months. But this is what happened. One day we were in turbulence and we're flying and I'm struggling to keep the airplane upright and on course. And he says, you know what? I got the airplane. Let go of the yoke. So I did and he didn't grab it. And it smoothed out and flew straight and level and no one was touching the yoke. And he said to me, see, Kevin, it flies better without you. I had gotten so involved in it that I was overworking everything. And the Lord spoke to me right there, and he said, let go of the yoke. This is a very sacred time right now. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is this. If you want to experience revelation, well, then you got to get to know the, the expert at revelation, which is the Holy Spirit. Now, don't you think that the Holy Spirit would be the expert of the spirit realm? I mean, that's his world, right? He's right. He's, he's, that's his realm. So he takes you in, introduces you to his world. He's a person. He's just like Jesus. It, you wouldn't even believe it. it you think he's a, a bird. And he doesn't even want bird, bird seed. He doesn't have a beak. He's a person just like Jesus. 
It'll flip you out. When you see the Trinity, you're going to go, oh boy, wow, didn't see that coming. You've got three persons that are one God. And the only way that, that could be is that the spirit realm is multidimensional. But down here, in order to express himself, he has to do all this. This is the way it is. When I was in heaven, when I was at the throne, I had no questions about the Trinity. But down here, you could argue for days, theologically, about the Trinity. Okay, so the Spirit of God introduces you to his realm. Now, he's not interested in your realm because it's broken. So when the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost, he came when they were in one accord, and he came with a mighty rushing wind that filled the place. And then fire appeared on everyone's head. Okay, and then that brought utterance to where they were speaking, but they weren't speaking their language. They were speaking someone else's language that others heard. Okay, so there was wind, there was fire, and there was utterance. And the next one was that Peter had to stand up and say, these are not drunk as you suppose. They appeared to be intoxicated midday. That's how the Holy Spirit introduced himself to them concerning his realm. So what happened was, is when he showed up, it shifted everything into wind, fire, utterance, and drunkenness. Is everybody clear with this? Okay. So what has happened in 2,000 years that we become so sophisticated? When's the last time you had wind in your church or fire or utterance where everybody was speaking into another language or drunkenness? Well, we had it today. But do you understand that this was the introduction of the Holy One to humanity. And people were filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke. And they lived and moved and had their being in Him. Okay, so if you want revelation, you need to have the revelator. He is a person who opens your eyes, but they're not your physical eyes. It's your spiritual eyes. Your ears have to hear the voice of God. He opens those ears and he lets you hear the voice of your shepherd. He takes you by the arm like he has me and he took me back before the flood. I was taken. Then I was taken after the flood to Elijah's time. I saw Enoch and I saw Elijah. Because he is, the Spirit of God is the master. And there are no limitations with him. Is everybody clear about that? Your limitations are based down here in your body and in your mind. So your soul is your mind, will, and emotions, and they are not reliable. And unless you have been transformed by the renewing of your mind by the word of God, and unless you discipline your body, it's going to take you in the wrong direction. Many people go through life wishing they could understand the realm of the spirit and the warfare that goes on behind the scenes. In his brand new study guide and three CD set, The Notes of a Warrior, Volume 1, Dr. Kevin Zadai helps you to develop your ability to engage the enemy on every level. Kevin's brand new study guide and three CD set, The Notes of a Warrior, Volume 1, will help equip you to learn to recognize God's direction for your life, Encounter clarity in knowing God's battle strategies against your enemies. Exercise your authority as a believer. Walk in increased discernment through the Holy Spirit's power. And much, much more. In this exclusive offer, Kevin also prays impartation prayers on each CD to help you in your advance against the enemy. Order today 
Kevin's brand new study guide and exclusive three CD set, The Notes of a Warrior, Volume 1. For a donation of $29, US shipping and handling included. To order, call 888-340-1460 with offer code 100T or go online to kevinzadai.com slash offer. It's time to stand up for your rights as a Christian and give the devil a headache. Your body will make you supersized. You will eat and eat and eat. Your emotions will defeat you and think that everybody hates you and everybody loves you. You'll feel rejected and you're not rejected. Okay, so he comes and he reveals the spirit realm to you. What does he show you? Well, Jesus said when he comes, he's going to show you things to come. He's going to remind you of things that I said, Jesus' words. He's going to show you the future, and he's going to be with you forever. He's never going to leave you. You're never going to be an orphan. And so he's delivered you from isolation. Hello. Hello. He opens your eyes and you see a cloud of witnesses. You see angels. You hear and see the other realm where there are no limitations. And the Spirit bids you to come. He he takes you up into his realm where there is no defeat, where there is no questions, there's just answers. But see, you're so used to not understanding You're so used to feeling pain in your body. And you're so used to feeling the feelings you feel that you've become accustomed to your life down here, which is really not good. The Holy Spirit wants to change your perception by lifting you up from a vantage point where you are in your sweet spot. Okay, so after revelation comes and he has been revealing Jesus to you and the Father, you start to feel accepted in the beloved. You start to have the spirit of adoption crying out from you, Abba, which Romans 8.15 says. You work yourself to the place where you know you are adopted and you're part of the family of God, which means that you have benefits by being part of the family of God. That means you're an heir of God and a co-heir with Jesus Christ. As you walk through Romans 8, past verse 15, you start to get towards the end. Now you become more than a conqueror. When you get to verse 30 and 31, you start to realize that, wait a minute, I'm beyond just a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror. It's a process of revelation. Did everybody just follow me? So Romans 8 is what you walk through. That's your profile. That's your pathway. It's been given to you by the Spirit. It's a hidden secret. Romans 8. It's very important that you live and walk through that whole chapter all the time. Spirit's going to take you step by step into more than a conqueror through him who loved you. Who can separate us from the love of God? No one. Nor demons, nor angels, no nobody. Okay, that's just revelation. There's more. You ready to go up again to another step? It's called visitation. What happens with visitation is, is then because your eyes are open, because you've become accustomed to God's way of doing things, And you you get rid of selfishness and you start thinking of others than yourself. Can you imagine that? And you realize that the reason you're here is for others. And that if you look after God's people, God will have your back. And he's going to take care of you. As you give to others, as you start to minister to others, as you consider others more than yourself, and you become the servant of all, imagine that. God starts to come and fall behind you and and take care of you because you're taking care of his people. 
what happens then is you become irresistible to God. Now listen closely. Jesus said to me, he said, you have pursued me. You have spent your life fasting and praying. You have done everything I've ever asked you to do. You sowed. You reaped. You considered yourself as nothing and others as everything. He said, you have sought me. He said, what if I let you catch me? I said, you see, because in your pursuit, you never thought that you could actually catch God. But did you know that he wants you to catch him? So what's going to happen one day as you're pursuing him and running full speed at him? He's going to stop and turn around, and you're going to run into him. He's going to let you catch him. Now what are you going to do? Yeah. See, now you're going to have an encounter face-to-face, and God's going to visit with you. And all of a sudden, you're going to step back because all of a sudden it's uncomfortable because you never thought that he'd actually let you catch him, but you just did. Now you're face-to-face with your creator, and you don't know what to do next. This is common, just so you know. This will all happen in the church in the next three years, all over the world. God is going to stop and let you catch him. All over the world, people are going to encounter him. And then they're going to realize they weren't ready for it. So God's going to start to ask you questions. He's going to ask you, what is bothering you anyway? And you're going to have to think about it. Yeah, I am kind of in a bad mood. And, um, and then you figure it out, okay, it's this. I feel rejection. He goes, well, what's the root of that? You wouldn't expect that either. You thought it was just going you know, to tell him what's going on, and then that's it, you know? No, he says, let's get to the root of this. Why are you rejected? So he asked me that. Because I told him it's rejection. He said, what's the root of that? It took me three days to figure out what the root of that was. It was my father. It was my relationship with my father. I was rejected by him. So I went back to God. I said, it's my father. He goes, okay. He said, do you think that has bled over into your relationship with the father, God? I go, oh boy. Do you see where I'm going with this? You see, visitation is more intimate than revelation. And we have wanted to have revelation, but you don't know what that leads to. It leads to intimacy. But intimacy, can you handle intimacy if you don't have a a good father figure, if you don't have the right attitude towards a father, if you've never experienced? Because Satan has stolen the father's from their children. And we are, I'm just telling you what Jesus said, we are a fatherless generation. It was the design of the enemy. Because this is the age where the Father God will be revealed. See, what's happening is the Father has reserved himself for last, the best for last. The glory is the Father's, and he is going to come into services with glory. He's going to come. We've had the, the charismatic, the Holy Spirit move. We've had the Jesus movement. But we haven't had the Father move. But the Father is going to show up in his glory cloud. And no one is going to have to lay hands on anyone. He'll come in and you'll hear bones cracking. You'll hear people being healed. Because the glory is where there's no work at all. You will not have to work at this next move. But let's get back to visitation. So it's matters of the heart. In visitation, Jesus is going to have questions to ask you about why you are struggling. And you'll find out that it's not your fault. However, that does not solve the problem. Even if you blame everybody. It doesn't make you feel any better because you still are hurting. So visitation exposes the, the things that are needed 
And Jesus starts to talk to you about the, the matters of the heart. Why do you respond the way you do when certain things happen? And he, he got to the place where he totally turned the table on the enemy in my life. And the Satan, Satan became the victim. I was no longer a victim. I woke up one day. I remember exactly where I was. And I had been to heaven. I had Jesus at the time appear to me 26 times. But I was a victim. Visitation exposed that. And the tables were turned, and now the enemy is the victim, constantly. Mark it down, it's going to happen to all of you. Satan hates this night. Everywhere I go, he hates this night. But I have to turn the tables on the enemy in your life. And the only way I can do that is with the help of the Holy Spirit, with the help of Jesus, the Son of God to get you ready for the third phase of the church. Revelation is first. Visitation is second. When you have resolved that you are not a victim, but Satan is the victim. The third thing that's going to happen in the church is habitation. What happens is, is Jesus and the Father are visiting with you. And they decide one night that they're not going to go home. They're going to stay with you. And they stay with you the night, and then they're there the next day. And they never go. Because you have become irresistible to heaven. Jesus has told me, you're irresistible. I can't stand to be away from you. He's told me that. He's appeared to me and said that. He asked me actually, to go ahead and give up the ghost and come with him several years ago after I had accomplished everything that he sent me back to do. And I said, I, if you will continue to send me to people and send me to nations, I want to stay. I don't want to die now. I got to the place where I was not the victim, but I was victimizing the enemy constantly. Because I, the tables turned on me. And what the poison that the Satan had put in front of me, the table turned and now it's before him. So habitation is your goal. Now in habitation, you're going to get to know the Father. But see, visitation and revelation have helped you get to the place where you resolve your heart matters. Is everybody understanding what I'm saying? This has to happen, and for those who have had this happen and you're not a victim anymore, you will encounter the glory because the glory is from the Father. 